Hello viewers, I am Sally Ann Gray and welcome to Set the Stage. Today we have with us none other than Stacey Ann Garvey. She's with us for the second time, back by popular demand. This morning we went to visit the new prison location. Remind us of the name, Stacey? South Camp Adult Correctional Center. And where did you serve time? Uh, Fort Augusta Adult Correctional Center. Ah, and listen, Stacey was sharing with us about the ministry that she has resurrected Garvey Ministries and how she has been serving prison inmates since her release. And when we go on the inside, we're going to take it on the inside, right, <laughs> Stacey? Definitely. When we go on the inside, we're going to be talking a little bit about how prison inmates, when they're released, how is it that we can help them as members of the society to set the stage for next level success as they try to pull their lives together. We have spoken a lot on the back end, but for the viewers, share with us a little bit about how it actually felt to be free, having been behind bars for five years. Uh, the best way to describe it is, you know, after you've gone to college for like three to four years to, you know, do your degree, and then going out there to seek a job and doing something for the first time. Mm -hmm. One of the things for me, you know, being incarcerated for like five years coming home was new for me mm -hmm. i had to learn how to communicate with society again mm. you know i had to learn how to carry myself a certain way because for five years i was wearing uniforms mm. right and i had to get my mind to a place to understand that you know certain things are different it felt good of course you want to be home you want to be with your family you know you want to be able to do things on your mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. but amidst all of that it was kind of a scary feeling mm -hmm. because you were now testing whether or not you know are, am i ready for this mm -hmm. will i be good at this you know and you had to get to a place to know that okay this is my reality now mm -hmm. i've gone through you know the testing and the trials and and i, I need to prove myself now so mm -hmm. i mean coming home and and being free mm -hmm. you know it was refreshing it was hopeful but it was also scary mm, scary wow you said something interesting just now did you feel pressure on yourself to prove that you were ready for this that you were good enough that um you deserved a second chance did you feel that pressure from society or did you put it on yourself i believe that i had hope when mm -hmm. i came home mm -hmm. so that pressure would have come from society you know i realized that even though prison you know is quote unquote the prison there's a greater prison in society mm. the prison of those who believe that you know you're marred for the rest of your life you're scarred for the rest of your life and you don't deserve a second chance. Mm -hmm. The other day I made a post and I was saying, okay, you're in prison, you're rehabilitated, then what? Mm -hmm. Because when you come home, you, you, you don't get a job just like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't get a government job because there are laws and stipulations against persons who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So how do you survive? Private companies, unless somebody know you, they won't hire you. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, you know, they give you a certain kind of salary, you know. Listen, the list goes on. There are so many things. You want to start a business? It is not easy to get a loan to do that. Who will come and invest in you? So the truth is that it's a hard ball to play. Mm -hmm. And the pressure did come from society because you had to prove yourself that you are worthy mm -hmm. of being given a second chance. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to work extra harder than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, you know, being fired from a job after I held it for like three, four years. I was really good at it, was a really good worker. But, you know, people look down on you because of where you've been and they feel like, okay, they can't just take step and do anything with mm -hmm. you. And when they realize that even though you've been through this, you have standards, the, the, the fact that you have a record now becomes the excuse to say you're fired. And so mm -hmm. I've had 
so much emotional abuse mm -hmm. you know just coming home and trying to prove myself that i am worthy of this second chance mm -hmm. that god would have given to me and let me let me let me just say this right here that all of this pressure did not just come from society alone at large but it also came from the church mm. and i don't mean that in a bad way because i am a part of the church and i am the church as well you know but i'm saying this to say that you know we need to get certain things in order for people like me who are gonna come out of incarceration and need help in reintegrating back into society the right way wow that's very powerful stacy and you know i know that that's what your ministry is about mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important so today we really want to help to establish how can members of society the church you know the different systems within our society help persons who are incarcerated to become successful how can we set the stage for next level success for them and and i hope and i hope that you would appreciate that um, many persons in society like myself we've never been taught we've never been taught schooled or educated on how it is we should interact with someone with um a past someone who has been in prison that's not even a conversation that is had and so today i want you to educate educate the audience tell tell the audience what are some practical things that we can do to help to set the stage for next level success for persons once they leave prison I mean, one of the things for me is that, you know, being in prison and being around persons who got themselves in trouble, mm -hmm. I understood that, you know, it was, there was a route. There were issues that caused them to go down a, a wrong road and end up there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Coming home and coming face to face with those issues that you're not yet delivered from can send you back the same place mm. are even worse. Wow. One of the things that we have to do is to get our minds and our hearts at a place to understand people. Yes. And to understand that people are people and people are prone to making mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah, just because, you know, I went to prison at did time, I know what wrong and right is. It don't mean that I am different from somebody else that will do wrong or, you know, that is And just heading. didn't get caught. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we have to get our minds and our heart at a place to understand that, listen, your issues might not be my issues how can i help you to overcome your, your issues? issues i mean the scripture said it confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. there are many persons that are struggling with underlying issues that many times cause them to end up in the wrong place mm -hmm. i believe that as a church or even as a society if we put measures and programs in place how to educate people you know how to deal with inmates how to deal with persons that mm -hmm. experience incarceration and are still struggling with some of the emotional and the mental issues that they have i believe that this society will be better mm -hmm. what am i talking about so you know in prison you know there were programs that you know we did as inmates mm -hmm. you know we were I was just about to ask right? about we that did counseling you know we got mentorship not in the in the full sense but mm -hmm. it started mm -hmm. you know we read books i believe that if we put programs in place where persons who are, who would have gone through these situations you know come now and educate people about what it is like to be there give them an understanding of what the situation is like mm -hmm. then people will come into a better place of understanding what these people go through Mm -hmm. I'm not telling the world to stop and freeze for people in prison, no. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that if we get ourselves at a place where we understand these people, understand that they have real issues, mm -hmm. understand them to a, to a point where we try and find ways and means to help them, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have, 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 have so many problems mm -hmm. on a large scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somebody come home from prison, mentally, they're not fully ready yet for society, you know, because mm -hmm. it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time for them to grow, right? It's going to take time for them to build up their integrity and their character again. Because remember, this was flawed way before them, them, them going to prison. Mm -hmm. So we need to give people time to grow. We need, listen, there's a level of understanding that has to be given. Mm -hmm. And people need a chance. People need a chance to prove themselves. 
if you don't give me a job, you don't, you, you're not gonna know whether I can do well on it, yes or no. Mm -hmm. So I believe that one of the things that we can do as a society is to be more understanding mm -hmm. because there are many persons that are walking around that have done wrong, them just never get caught. Ah, right? Yeah. So, so somebody getting caught and doing them time and, and, and was brave enough to say, you know what, this happened to me. Help me to become a better person. Mm -hmm. Help me to walk out my transformation. Help me to be this person that I believe that mm -hmm. I can. Encourage me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Be that person that will give me favor. Mm -hmm. You know, ex ex extend love to me. So those are just some of the things that mm -hmm. I believe that mm -hmm. can, can you know, mm -hmm. help persons who have been mm -hmm. in situations like that. Absolutely. Profound points. Public education is key right. um, to helping us understand what inmates go through. And then from the family and friend, friend standpoint is to understand that, you know, there is a process that you will go through and kind of be there to kind of encourage and walk it through. So those are kind of some of the, the things that we can do from the perspective of encouraging somebody, um, understanding mindset. Um, but I want to dig a little bit deeper here, um, <laughs> Stacey. Um, I think it's great to pray for people. I think it's great to encourage people. I think it's great to inspire people. But I want you to really, really get raw and honest with me about what are some of the tangible things that we can do. Like if we have it in our ability to give this person a job, you know, um, what are some of the, the things that we can do? Because if you come out of prison and you're not able to care for your needs, what is going to happen? <laughs> so you need to be earning, right? So outside of possibly helping by giving a job, what are some of the tangible things that members of society can do to really walk you through and help you through the transformation process? You know, it's really sad that, you know, in, in a, is it, 21st century mm -hmm. you know certain things are just not in place mm -hmm. and i don't think that our country has done enough mm -hmm. for, i mean yes you did wrong and you you, you you got the prison you do the time already and you get the sentence already mm -hmm. but i don't believe that our country has done enough to help persons you know like myself you come home and there's nothing to do. There's no, and I, when I say help, I don't mean somebody coming to just hand you a bag of grocery or give you some money. Mm -hmm. I mean there is no tangible program in place mm -hmm. to help persons like myself. So there's no program to help you to reintegrate back into society. Mm. You, have, you, you have been in prison five years. You've been learning a prison culture. You've been learning how to talk in prison how to, to to communicate with each other in prison mm -hmm. so you don't know how to write a proper job letter meaning you don't know how to write a proper application to get a okay. to get a job mm -hmm. you don't know how to communicate with properly with even your family and your friends because guess what the scars from prison the mm -hmm. stigmas that are attached to you mm -hmm. will cause you to respond in anger and hurt right other than responding to what somebody is really saying because of where your mind is mm -hmm. i believe sally that one of the things that and this is something that my ministry is pushing mm -hmm. one of the things that we can do as a people as a society is to support these programs for persons like myself mm -hmm. why do i keep saying myself because i have been there people need to be mentored mm -hmm. people need to be coached because guess what everybody have something down inside of them yes so you're going come home and you can't get a nine to five what can you, you do, do with your hands, hands. Yes. apart from committing the crime doing the little petty things to get your back behind bars what can you do with your hands what 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 is what hiding in your do right? you have? what yeah. is hiding in your mind that can come to fruition that you can use to pull out the wealth and the value that is inside of you mm -hmm. who is there to encourage you mm -hmm. so that even though you get up today and you don't feel like going you don't sit there you, who is there to give you that hope mm -hmm. and that light it is good that we pray for people but then what you know mm -hmm. there, there something practical has mm -hmm. to be done so Go ahead. I, I came home, mm -hmm. you know, I was living with my mother and I had to leave because of issues. Mm -hmm. Not that she's a bad person. We just could not cohabitate. Mm -hmm. And I had to go on my own. Mm -hmm. I did not have it. And so I fell back into a horrible financial cycle because of that. Mm -hmm. Some of the programs that we can implement are shelters. Give person a time, three, six, to, six to 12 months. 
we teach you how to go out there and look at job. Mm -hmm. We enroll in some school programs. Yes. We find out what you can yeah. do. We see how best we can. Listen, if you teach people how to plant corn, listen, you will reap a harvest. Yes. And I believe that some of the things that we can do as a society is to help pull value out of these persons. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why I am so passionate about, about the ministry that I am doing. Because I know if we can curb the problem from the root, we're not going to just make a difference mm -hmm. for one person, but mm -hmm. society. People's homes won't be broken into. Mm -hmm. Because most times people come in crime because they're hungry. Mm -hmm. Most women that I have met, they were carrying drugs because they wanted to feed their children. Mm -hmm. If we can show them a better route oh. and, and put their minds intact at mm -hmm. the same time, we'll be developing powerful people. Wow, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, listen, we have a lot of work to do. And I say <laughs> we because I'm Jamaican. I'm part of this society. Um, you know, and I think it's just very important, you know, and if there's any audience member out there who can think of a way that we can come together, you can partner with Stacey to, you know, help um, putting something like that to, together or any government official, we need to have that 12 month program in place. Now, I'm not the expert on this. I've never sure, um, you know, spent time behind bars. I'm taking your lead on this, but as a well thinking Jamaican, it sounds like something that would make sense you know have this 12 month program where persons can live you still you get counseling teach them how to seek a job or how to create a job for themselves i love it stacy oh my goodness so i mean now talk to us about your ministry because your ministry goes hand in hand with what you're passionate about. <laughs> and, and I know that there are many different things that you do in your ministry, right? You, you have your book, you host conferences, you're a talk show host yourself. You have resurrected Garvey Ministries where you go into the prisons. But then there's another side to it. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. We have several programs mm -hmm. um, that we, you know, we've written them mm -hmm. and we're just waiting for you know partners to partner with us mm -hmm. some of what i just spoke about are programs that we've written mm -hmm. because i believe that this the, this is something that will make a difference yes. listen and and why i believe i am the perfect example mm. we've written programs for persons who are incarcerated listen if you can reach those inmates where they are mm -hmm you can help them to become mm -hmm. the person that God created them to be. Mm -hmm. and, and even if it's not a God thing, because many persons won't believe, but you can pull out that skill and that talent from, from, from where it is, where it is hidden inside of them, mm -hmm. to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. We have a program where, you know, we wrote a program concerning a shelter, you know, where we, we want to host persons for six to 12 months, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, where we will mentor them, coach them, counsel them, mm -hmm. you know, enroll them in programs such as, you know, entrepreneurship um, courses, mm -hmm. you know, several other I things. I like that, Heart yeah, Trust. <laughs> heart yeah. Trust. And, and we want to partner done. with Heart Trust as yes. well. You know, several other things that we want to do because we believe it's not just about you know, giving away stuff, but it's about education as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. You know, if persons are educated the right way, mm -hmm. they learn how to communicate mm -hmm. and how to think. Is it critical thinking I want to yes. say? But yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. They learn how to think, right, mm -hmm. and know, you know, if, if I make that bad step, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, several different programs that we want to, we mm -hmm. want to do. Um, you know, we know that there are persons that are, still incarcerated that are struggling mm -hmm. mentally a lot of times we believe that people bad because they want bad no mm -hmm. there's always an underlying issue I, i've shared my testimony on many platforms mm -hmm. my issue started with rejection right rejection right. led to eight to nine abortions it led to depression it led to me being an alcoholic and a drug addict right there is always With an underlying roots. issue so we have to get to the root. Get so wait, the there's root. something called root cause analysis, right. which I train <laughs> on a lot in leadership because I'm saying if you're a manager of people or a leader of people, you have to get to the root of why they're not meeting their targets within your department. Right. So basically what you're talking about is doing a root cause analysis on each inmate right. to decipher like what was the reason why you developed this behavior to begin with. Correct. And then once that is addressed, 
then you are able to move forward in a more structured and strategic way, correct, right? Correct. Absolutely. Correct. There well, are many things that you know the Holy Spirit will, you know, inspire me with and give me visions about. And Sally, the truth is, and I'm not afraid to tell persons this. And this is why it is so important that we partner with the right people. It's just like I mentioned something, but you have a greater understanding and you can give a better explanation right. to what it is that I am saying. And this is what I'm talking about. Great partnerships. Right. I know the vision that God gave, but I need people to come on board, board. and to explain to me fully mm -hmm. what God is, because I understand what God is saying to me. But then I might not be able to explain it to somebody Nobody else. else. You understand what I'm sure, saying? Sure, sure. So, you know, the, the aim of the ministry is really to transform lives. Mm -hmm. And we want to start at the root. We're going to communities and we, we do feedings. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we give away items, clothing, household stuff. We do several outreach ministries. Some of them we advertise, some of them we don't advertise. Mm -hmm. Because listen, when people are in need, they don't think properly. Yeah. Yeah, they, some little foolish start coming at their mind. Mm -hmm. And most times they end up going down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are just some of the things that, you know, we want to do and we have pen on paper just waiting for the right partnerships mm -hmm, to come mm -hmm, forward mm -hmm. so audience members listen <laughs> if this is this sounds like something that you're interested in i want you to reach out to our show listen i want you to find stacy and garvey you'll see the um her instagram and yeah again. yeah um <laughs> it will come up on the screen and you can make sure that you follow her that you get in contact with her message her to see how you can support the ministry how you can partner with her and if you know of government officials your mp in your community listen this is something that is needed for all jamaicans um who are in incarcerated and need a second chance and we owe it to them right Correct. because listen <laughs> i want to i want to talk a little bit about this sometimes they say you'll hear people say um if you do the crime you do the time and some people say lock them up and throw away the key and that that is the mindset that needs to change and i want to just kind of ask you head on here how do you feel when you hear people make statements like that, given the fact that you have lived this and you have experienced how persons have treated, you know, um, or you've lived, you've lived the experience of not being accepted? I mean, you know, persons may not understand the power of restoration mm -hmm. and persons, you know, may not even understand the power of forgiveness. Mm. And, and let me go a little further. Some people don't even understand, you know, how much power, you know, they, 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 they allow themselves to lose mm. by being unforgiving. Mm. One of the things, one of the prime examples I've always used is that Jesus never stayed on the cross. Mm. So after he was crucified, after he allowed them to, you know, do all the things that they did to him, after they buried him, he was resurrected. Mm. And so for me, that is the most powerful example about a second chance because wow. it's like Jesus living two times. Mm. I had to get to a place, Sally, where I understood that my life is in the hands of God mm -hmm. and that he is in total control. Mm -hmm. I had to get to a place where I understand that I cannot stay in the grave anymore, mm -hmm. where the grave clothes are, because the grave clothes is mm -hmm. what I represented back then, mm -hmm. right? I had to understand that I am not a place of ascension mm -hmm. where God is, is, is building me up and mm -hmm. taking me up. Mm -hmm. So when persons are stuck with my grave clothes, I now have to feed my mind with the fact that that's not where I am anymore. Mm -hmm. So if that's where you want to stay, that's then I'll place. help you to get where I am by mm -hmm. showing you mm -hmm. what God has done in my life. Mm -hmm. It has not been easy. Mm -hmm. Even to date, it has not been easy because there are many persons who believe that because of where you were and because of even who you were, you do not deserve where God is taking you. Mm -hmm. I believe that I am purpose. I believe that I have been given the second chance to make impact. Absolutely. Touch imp me, girl. <laughs> I knew this was coming. 
uh, and to even impact mm -hmm. others. The reason why the ministry is called Resurrected Garvey Ministry mm -hmm. is because we are in the business of resurrecting others. Jeez. Because there are many powerful stories out there. Mm -hmm. God, God allows journeys for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I didn't go to prison, I couldn't write a book. Mm -hmm. I would have no evidence or nothing foundational to stand and to have a ministry. Yes. Because it was my bad experiences mm -hmm. that led to all of this. Absolutely. So what am I saying? I have moved past the I have moved past condemnation. Mm -hmm. and I am now stuck at elevation mm -hmm. and that's where my mind is also stuck mm -hmm. so if you want to give credence and if you want to live in yesterday that's that's mm -hmm. that's your thing mm -hmm. I know where I am mm -hmm. and who God has called me to be mm -hmm. and this is what I try to impart on and anybody I come across and even people that I impact on a day-to-day -day basis absolutely I mean powerful I think we can end there guys um <laughs> listen we have an, an, a unique opportunity now that we've been educated by somebody who has lived this experience. Let us not leave um, prison convicts in the grave. Let, let us not continue to take them back in the past, but let us help to push them forward and propel them into purpose and give them a second chance. If they did the crime and they served the time, then we have a responsibility to empower them. Stacy, thank <laughs> you so much for coming out. It was so good to have this conversation with you. And I just want to close by allowing you um, an opportunity to share with our audience. Um, for the members of the audience who would like to contact Stacy, partner with her, and um, you know, provide any type of resources for her ministry as she seeks to help other persons transition from prison into society, I want to offer this space to her <laughs> to um, share her contact details. All right, so um, persons can contact me by, via my Facebook page, Resurrected Garvey, and also my Instagram page, Resurrected Garvey, as well. Uh, my email address is resurrectedgministries at gmail.com. I can be contacted via phone at 876 four four zero six zero one nine or whatsapp five zero four seven one seven nine god bless you